wine reaches a certain point of fermentation that, and the percentage of alcohol can max out maybe at 15, and that's wine. I could take that wine and distill it, which is gonna bring the alcohol content to higher. So when you look at, for example, grape, which is wine is made from, right? The wine is up to the fermentation. Further, to be distilled, you can end up getting stuff like uh, grappa, cognac, they're all from grapes, right? So they end up being distilled, which increases the alcohol content in there. And the distillation, the, this, this, uh, distillation of, of alcohol is basically the removal of water, right? So you, you remove the liquid content to bring the alcohol content higher, right? And that's what happens with liquor. That's how liquor uh, is, is made, right? So technically in North America, uh, and uh, there's something called a bar rail. And a bar rail is uh, the most common spirits used in a bar. So here in, in Canada, usually it's Canadian whiskey, gin, vodka, rum, and scotch, right? Those are what they call the bar rail. Most often the bar rail are sort of the cheapest uh, of alcohol that can be purchased. It's volume, right? So it will be the cheapest Canadian whiskey, the cheapest gin, the cheapest vodka, the cheapest rum, the cheapest scotch whiskey, and that will be on a bar rail. So if someone came into a bar and said, uh, give me a gin and tonic, you're gonna pick up the bar rail, pour the gin, pour the tonic, type of thing. Unless they specified a particular brand, which will end up being a premium brand. So when it comes to uh, Canadian whiskey, most of us know uh, Canadian Club, sold around the world. Uh, it's Canadian whiskey, Crown Royal Canadian whiskey. Uh, these are our most typically blends of whiskey. So they're made from single grains, corn or rye, right? And, uh, but also sometimes wheat or barley. And then what happens is they, they create a mash bills of multiple grains. They also were used for some flavoring whiskeys, right? So the Canadian um, whiskey is known as rye. And the reason it's known as rye is because no matter what base of whiskey is used, be it corn or be it barley or whatever, the rye grain is added to the mash to create the flavoring. So it can be made with corn, it can be made with barley, it can be made with any of these, but rye has to be added to add the flavoring as a Canadian whiskey. And that's why we know in the bar industry, most often people will say, give me a rye and Coke, give me a rye and ginger. Rye meaning Canadian whiskey. Vodka, vodka is a distilled alcohol. Uh, you originated in Poland and Russia. Uh, that's where it's all started. Uh, it's primarily water and ethanol, water and alcohol, right? Uh, but there's usually uh, it's made with cereal grains, but the cereal grains are fermented with potatoes, right? So the same way you would make uh, grapes into wine is the same way they make uh, cereal grains and potatoes into alcohol. And then it, it goes to the fermentation and then it goes into the uh, distilling of it. Right, so, and vodka really, pretty much vodka has a very, from all the liquors that are out there, vodka has the most plain tasting. It does not really taste like anything. Uh, it's very, very plain uh, compared to all the other liquors. Whiskey has a taste, rum has a taste, uh, tequila has a taste. All these other ones have some kind of flavor to them. Vodka is usually very, very plain. Hence why vodka is one of the, uh, liquors that get infused with fruits. So now if you go into a liquor store, you're gonna see all kinds of vodkas that are strawberry flavor, raspberry flavor, orange flavor, lime flavor, because they're, they're, it's easy to infuse them. When you got a neutral flavor, you add infusion, it's very easy to do that. Talk about vodka, I worked at a martini bar uh, back in the 90s, it was very popular to have martini bars and it was very popular to infuse vodka. So we used to have these big five gallon jars 
where we would put fresh strawberries or uh, you know maybe make a one that's spicy with fresh hot peppers in and we fill up the five gallon jar with vodka and we let it sit right and it sits for a couple weeks after a couple of weeks we start pouring out the vodka it tastes like hot peppers or strawberries or whatever we put in there right type of thing so it's a very easy liquor to infuse rum on the other hand rum is made from sugarcane molasses sugarcane juices uh and it's by fermenting these uh these juices same way you ferment for beer or you ferment for wine type of thing right uh a clear liquid is usually aged in oak barrels right most rums are produced in the caribbean uh, and american countries but also in other countries such as the philippines and india for rum right rums are produced in various grades so usually they got light rum amber rum dark rum right uh and typically they're consumed either straight neat on the rocks uh also utilized for uh cocktails so a lot of the cocktails that are are uh, uh based with uh, uh sort of summer cocktails like like pineapples and coconuts that are are sort of the caribbean a lot of them use rum one of the reason why is because rum is randomly available in that country right gin Gin is from the Dinabar berry, right? Uh, and uh, gin is one of the, gin was, when gin was created, it was not created for a liquor. It was created for medicine, right? It was originated in Italy, made by the monks uh, as a form of medicine. And it went all over Europe, uh, and used for medicine in a sense, right? Uh, and now, of course, it's very popular in England, uh, and uh, it's uh, it's a liquor which has a very distinct flavor to it. It's a very predominant flavor, uh, and it comes from the juniper berry, right? Uh, and usually, a lot of times, it uh, it's um, it usually had known for gin and tonic. Uh, type of idea, uh, but it's used in a lot of cocktails as well. But it is a very uh, strong flavor to it uh, in comparison to when you look at all the clear liquors that are out there, uh, like uh, your rum and your vodka, uh, gin is a predominant flavor. So you have to be very careful with what type of cocktail you make with it, right? Uh, if you utilize gin with soda, it will taste awful. Gin with tonic, the tonic's a little stronger of a flavor. It will really uh, help complement the gin. Scotch, scotch. There are two types of scotch in uh, in Scotland. One is single malt, and the other one's blended. Uh, so the blended uh, the blended uh, scotches are a combination of many different types of scotches. It could come from different areas of England or Scotland. Uh, it could be grain, it could be malt, uh, it's a mixture. And those are your typical ones that you see on the shelf everywhere, like Johnny Walker or Chivas or uh, Ballantines. And all those ones there are uh, blended. So they come from everywhere, right? As of 2018, there were 133 Scotch whiskey distilleries operating in Scotland. So Scotland is just packed with distilleries. Every region of Scotland creates their own single malt scotch. And the single malt scotch, uh, on the other hand, is comes from one distillery, one single grain. So it's unique to that one area. So when you get into single malt, uh, which you see up at the top, I mean, uh, Glen Fittix and Glen Livets and all these other names that are... Uh, Scottish descent names, uh, each one has its own unique flavor. And it's unique to that area. It's unique to the aging process that was used. Uh, most often a scotch uh, would go, a single malt scotch would probably age for 12 years or more, 
right? So uh, it's a long time before you start drinking a single malt scotch. Very different than a blended scotch. A blended scotch is a little more harsher. Uh, it's usually a newer scotch, uh, and you can go up in uh, like Johnny Walker has Johnny Walker red, black, blue, and so on. Uh, and of course, blue is supposed to be smoother, uh, but nowhere near as smooth as a single malt scotch. A single malt scotch is is got a very unique uh, flavor to it, uh, to that particular area, and it's very smooth. It's not as harsh as liquor when you think about the percentage of alcohol. And you, if you were to drink a, 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 a rye or a vodka or a rum or a tequila, you're going to get that harsh flavor going down. On the other hand, a single malt scotch, on the other hand, it ends up being a very, very smooth. Uh, and uh, so very, very good in that way. Uh, so now tequila, also known as to kill you. Okay, uh, the may, it's made from the blue agave plant, right? It's primarily in the area of the city of Tequila, 65 kilometers from uh, Guadalajara uh, and Jalisco, the state of Jalisco. Uh, the agal plant is uh, rare to Mexico and only grown in that area pretty much. Uh, usually served neat. Uh, common that we know of service of uh, tequila is with salt and either lemon or lime. Uh, type of thing. Anybody from uh, Mexico here? There is somebody. Yeah, me, me, me. How's tequila me. served back home? Just with uh, salt and lime. Sorry, I'm eating my breakfast. That's okay. So salt, <laughs> salt and lime. And lime. Yeah, like in the photo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So that's uh, that's usually the way tequila is served. Uh, yes. Standard. Uh, type of thing, um, and uh, so what's with the worm in tequila? Anybody from Mexico can tell me what about the worm in tequila? Nobody? Worm? Yeah, worm in tequila. Anybody hear of worms and tequila? Yeah, I, I sometimes you see like scorpions and, and like stuff like that. Usually they're in the in the in the bottom of the bottle, but I don't know if it's a known thing. You know, that's like. Well, somebody from Mexico should be able to tell us. No, usually you don't see a worm in, the, in a tequila. That's like an old thing. It was an old thing. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, I have a bottle from I don't know when, uh, which is pretty much uh, dried up by now. Mm -hmm. But uh, and we got served like that. Hold on, let me show you. Yeah, I found uh, in Australia before uh, they used uh, in the bottle with a scorpion, and I think there's uh, some snake as well. I guess I'm not. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, there's a snake sometimes. No. Maybe no. maybe in some bottles, but not in the new ones, like are like more commercial that you can find like for example here in L C B O or No, you won't find it here. Yeah, for sure not. No, it was uh it was a, a common nineteen forties, nineteen fifties. Uh they did it as a souvenir. Yeah. Uh when people visited uh uh, when people visited uh, Mexico uh, and people would take it as a sort of a souvenir uh, type of idea, uh, but it wasn't something that was uh, sold everywhere, right? Mario, well, yeah. they have sometimes put snakes inside of cachaça bottles, like big snakes. Yeah. Is, is scary. And what's the reason behind it? I have no clue. Never was close to one of those bottles. What's well, that? No? Try, try to Google it, like cachaça bottle with snake inside. 
doesn't it have some form of intoxicant? It gives you a high. If you eat it, uh, if you eat it, kashas arispa kashasta. C A S T A C A C H A C A. Okay. God. Oh my God. You guys can't see my screen yet, right? <laughs> no, not yet. That's why no. I'm here. Wow. That's scary. It is. Now you remember this it's dead, right? But one thing that it does, it absorbs the alcohol. So if you were to eat that particular bug or snake or whatever that's in there, it will be extremely strong, which is interesting. But we're not going to put that on our menu, okay? Because otherwise I'm going to not be happy. Anyway, so in, uh, in typical... Uh, Tequila, usually 35 to 55% alcohol, right? Uh, which in the US is 70 to 110 proof. But in, um, uh, to be sold in the United States and Canada, uh, it must contain at least 40% alcohol for tequila. It could not really contain more, right? So what's being manufactured to be imported or exported to Canada or the US it's different than what you're going to get in certain parts of Mexico when it comes to alcohol. Brandy. So brandy is uh, the distilling of wine, right? So you take wine, you distill it, removing the liquid from it, uh, allowing for a higher percentage of alcohol uh, to go in. Uh, most often, all the spirits that we see here in uh, in Canada uh, is 40%. That's sort of the, you might go up to maybe 43, 44, but on average it's 40% uh, when it comes to spirits or liquor. Uh, and uh, usually some brandies, they're aged in wood caskets, uh, right? To sort of uh, get that color, that sort of brown color, because you're taking a, a wine that might be uh, uh, a burgundy or red or or that nature there and now what you're doing is by aging it you're getting it to become sort of that brownier color it's taking the, all the flavors from the oak barrels to to actually create the color of it uh, and of course to speed things up uh, most often the cheaper brandies because brandy is a mass production uh, they will put uh, caramel color Right, so sort of to, to enhance the color quicker, right? Because based on the color, we, we sort of, a lot of times we, we drink or eat based on what we see, right? So having a nice, beautiful caramel color makes that brandy look very uh, appealing, right? Uh, and of course, uh, it, it, will, it will imitate the effect of aging, right? So speed things up. Right, and uh, basically brandy is uh, available all around the world. It can be produced in any areas that produce wine. Uh, so we have like, the bottom here is Ernest and Julio Gallo, right? So there's Gallo wines, like Gallo White Zippendale from California. They have tons of wines from Ernest and Julio, which is a, a winery in California. And of course they produce brandy now. It's actually one of the best brandies that's out there uh, type of thing. And uh, they produce brandy because the demand is there, right? And they have the wine, so why not? Cognac, on the other hand. Cognac is, uh, it's a variety of brandy. So it's the same idea as brandy, where it's made from the grapes being distilled, the wine being distilled after it's gone through the fermentation. The only uh, thing with cognac is that the only area 
that you can get it is in Cognac, France. So it's only the, the, the wine growing region of that area that can produce Cognac. So you cannot produce a brandy in Niagara Falls or Niagara on the Lake and call it a Cognac. You can call it a brandy, but you can't call it a Cognac. Okay. So, and of course, it's, uh, you know, it would have to meet certain legal requirements for that area, be it the grapes and uh, be it uh, the quantity of specified grapes that are, are used, right? Uh, type of thing, like the Ugni Blanc, Blanc or the Saint Emilion. Uh, and it's mostly widely used. The brandy must be twice distilled in copper pot stills, right? So it's, it's most brandies are distilled once. On the cognac, it's distilled twice. And it must be aged at least two years in French oak barrels, which are particular to the area of Limousin and uh, Trompe. That's why when you look at cognac, the difference between this, now remember, this is a brandy, but it's called a cognac because it comes from the cognac region. But a Hennessy, in comparison to this, is double the price because it comes from the cognac region and it's distilled twice and it has a lot of particulars on how it's made. This particular bottle here is $1,800 at the LCD. Louis the Fourteenth crystal bottle. The bottle, the bottle alone, because of the quality of the product, the bottle alone is a crystal bottle. And if you were to sell that bottle empty, you'd get at least two hundred dollars. So cognac is sort of the prestige of brandy. Most often, very, very expensive. Very, very expensive, uh, and we, but the quality you get is phenomenal, right? You pay for what you get. Has anybody ever tasted uh, cognac? Anybody? Yes. And uh, and my my grandma actually used to make cognac. And where in France? Oh no, in Lebanon. In uh, Yes, we, we we also make it from grapes, and uh, but it, it's such an old thing. Like she, she doesn't even teach us the recipe. <laughs> but it's not cognac; it's brandy. Because no. cognac is only in France region. It's only in France region, the cognac region. Brandy, very similar to cognac. It's it is the same. It just it's not to make cognac. It has to be in the cognac region. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I've tasted it from stores, but I thought it was the same thing. It, it, it'll pretty much it almost, especially if it's homemade, it'll probably taste the same <laughs> because the quality will be much better. But cognac can only be in uh, the cognac region. A lot of people have that misconception, uh, right? So, I mean, sometimes you, you go to uh, a restaurant and you ask for a cognac and you get it and you, you just say the word cognac and the server comes along and serves you a Hennessy, you get your bill and you see $18 for that one shot. You go, what the hell, right? But you're thinking of brandy that you had at another place that served you for $7 for a shot. And happened right? the champagne. Champagne, same thing, yeah, right? I mean, champagne is only the champagne region of France. Everywhere else is a sparkling wine. Right, so, uh, and uh, you know, France has a lot of that, right? Because they're, they're the ones that ex, uh, sort of became the experts of winemaking and so on and so forth. So they, they really lock up their areas and uh, anything else that comes from there can't be used for there, right? All right, let's go back into the groups and we're gonna create four liquors that we have talked about uh, and we're going to create four cocktails that will fit into your bar type and theme. So you can pick any of these, be a big cognac, brandy, 
tequila, scotch, gin, rum, vodka, Canadian whiskey, all the way through. Any one of these four, you got to pick four different ones and you got to create a cocktail. So to create a cocktail, what's involved to create a cocktail? What do we need? Alcohol. Soda, water, or... We need alcohol, food. we need some kind of what they call mix, right? So water, fruit, juices, soft ice. drink, ice, yes. And what else do we need? Glasses. Glasses, yes. Or glasses. And what else? Shakers, bar spoon. Yeah. Now, if I were to show you guys, for example, so if I take some of these cocktails that we have served here, okay, for example, this Rainbow Paradise, does this glass make it go, oh my God, I need one? What if I took that and put it inside this glass here? Does this, will it say anything to me? Not really. Right? Sometimes the glass, I know you still want it, I know. <laughs> but the glass will make the difference between the appearance of it. Right? So you guys want to look at different glassware uh, as well as the cocktail itself uh, and uh, sort of give an image of what it's going to look like. All right, so let's go back into breakout rooms and we'll regroup at 10.30. Is that good, enough time? Okay. Maybe. Let's try, let's try and see. All right, so I'm gonna put you back into breakout rooms. I know some people have joined uh, just now uh, which is fine. Uh, I am going to assign you guys to a room. Ooh, there's lots of people that just joined. So I'm going to assign you guys to rooms that are existing right now, some of you. Uh, Matisa, you're in breakout room five. No idea. I was with the group that Shushita was in Ivan. Okay, Shushita Break it on four. Okay, and everyone else. Uh, Gobin, what group were you with? Okay, so for the rest of you that just joined that I have in the list here, I'm gonna put you guys into a breakout room. You gotta come up with a theme of a bar, uh, and then you guys gotta come up with the four cocktails that are uh, that fit your theme of your bar. Stuff like that, so. Who is missing from your group? Hello? Well, maybe the vodka could be a whiskey on the rocks. So People watch sports like whiskey or maybe a single malt scotch. Hello. Hello. Who's missing from your group? Uh, go bin. Go bin. Okay. I'm yeah. Go. Could you put uh, Tina in this group or you assign her? Who? Tina. Tina Pena. I think I. Yeah, yeah, you like personally, but people, because when you open a bar, you have to think all the people, yeah, not just sweet drinks that the people like when watching sports. I think tequila with just lemon and salt, like when the people is going to bar, oh, my team just won, whatever. It's... Yeah, so when you guys come up with cocktails, we, we uh, have some there. Oh, you can see in the chat. I don't know. 
Uh, you guys got to come up with uh, the pictures of them as well. Oh, the pictures? Yeah, you got to show me what kind of cocktail you're going to put in your sports bar. Like whiskey on rocks needs need the picture. Whiskey on the rocks is not a cocktail. But whiskey cannot. But like when you are uh, on a sports bar, you like to drink like a whiskey. Yes, you like to drink a whiskey. But, but I just that's not a cocktail. Okay. A cocktail has to have the liquor, some kind of mixture, be it like soft drink, juice, water. Mm -hmm and some kind of garnish and ice whiskey okay. in the rock is not it's not a cocktail right okay mm -hmm. so like my and margarita with uh, blood yes, mary sir. what's the the alcohol in blood mary, Bloody mary. With uh, Bloody Mary with vodka and uh, margarita okay. uh, with vodka as well. I think. Sure. Uh, Mar uh, she, margarita. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh. Students right now are in the clan in the breakout rooms. Uh, they've been given a project of creating a themed um, bar and they're coming up with four cocktails that they would serve in their theme bar uh, and their style of bar that matches their theme. Uh, and that's what they're working on right now. Uh, in about maybe 15, 20 minutes, we're gonna regroup back into the main room and we're gonna discuss their cocktails that they have uh, come up with. Should be fun. Three of you are, and uh, one from the uh, one or two from the Haruka that uh, share the screen with us. Hello, can two or three from that. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hi. Are you, Leo? Are you guys okay? You guys getting a hang of it? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we selected some cocktails. We um, like some cocktails that already exist that we think would go well with our bar. Okay. Or were you thinking about like us creating something like from scratch kind of thing? Whichever you please. Uh, okay. you, can, you can create if you want, or you can pick cocktails that already exist that are out there, but as long as they match your theme. Do you want to see the ones sure. that we're thinking about? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So some of of what we're thinking about are those. Um, let me share my screen with you. Uh, so our bar is a poolside bar, right? Okay. So we thought about a few cocktails like a pina colada with rum. Okay. A margarita with tequila. Okay and um, Sex on the Beach with vodka. Okay. So what, the, uh, what type of uh, liquor is Sex on the Beach made with? Uh, vodka. Perfect, okay. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. And you gotta come up with one more. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. No problem. I'm thirsty. I want to know what time this bar opens. Well, we are we divided each and every one of us has a has a brandy or alcohol style, okay. and we're gonna create uh, each and every one of us one cocktail. Okay, perfect. And, and make we'll sure we show it. some pictures. Yeah. Okay. If you're creating your own cocktail, uh, by all means, do that and get a picture that's similar to it, be it the glass or whatever, so that we get an idea. But you can create your own if you want by mixing different alcohol, by all means do that. And you can call yeah, it whatever uh, name you want. That's what we, we're supposed to do. We need to create our own or we need to choose a cocktail that already exists. You can do both, whichever one you please. Oh. 
right? Okay. If you guys want to create your own, by all means, create your own. Get a picture that's very similar, be it the glassware or the look of it uh, type of thing. You can use, you can do that by showing that picture and, and saying what your cocktail has and putting a name to it. Or you can take an existing cocktail if you want. Okay. Okay. Great. Perfect. So the water, uh, what run? Lime juice and mint leaves. I'm gonna write it down in a bit. Can can somebody check how do you spell bourbon? Bourbon. Yes, correct. That one bourbon. Like, like that? Yeah. Uh, this one I drink once. It's really nice. Um, okay, would you guys drink this match bourbon's match? Orange juice, bourbon, nice, orange bitter, and cherry. What is bourbon? Yeah, I don't know if you spell it right. But what is it? Yeah, it's correct. It's correct? Yeah. But what is bourbon? It's a kind of whiskey. Kind of whiskey? I thought it was. From where? Uh, I just you, you never heard to... of it, uh, Mario? I heard of it. I'm asking you guys. All right. Okay. Okay. You <laughs> I know exactly what bourbon right. is. What is bourbon? Yeah. Yeah. So the so same the only way that I that I drink is this one. This is from Diageo. Yes. Uh, I guess. I think. I think it's Diageo. Yeah, Diageo is the. The marketing company that uh, supplies it. Um, yeah. Bourbon is an American whiskey. Whenever you see bourbon, it's American whiskey is known as bourbon. Same way as Canadian whiskey is known as rye. I'm going to give both options uh, because I'm in Canada. I see. It's uh, the, the same type but different. Um it's just a whiskey that it's it's the it's a whiskey that's made in the U.S. It's called a bourbon. Okay. Because in the U.S., their bourbons are made with corn usually, and they don't add rye as we do the rye grain to it, right? So what makes Canadian whiskey distinct is it's because of the rye grain that's being added. We can make it with corn and other stuff, but we also add rye. Automatically, rye is added to it. Where in the U.S., they don't, right? So it's called bourbon. So it's just an American whiskey from the U.S., okay? okay. You, you drink any of these uh, recipes, uh, Mario? Would I drink any of these recipes? Now, uh, yeah, I would. Uh, so the top one's what? Ginger beer and lime mint cocktail? What's the bonus IPA? It's because the names of, because it's game. So I put a few names on the drinks that is related to game. So in this particular drink here, the raspberry cocktail, uh, is there any liquor in it? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if go tequila goes, but just like a dash, a little bit of tequila. I don't know. What can I put it here? Because remember, we're looking for the liquors that were discussed as part of the cocktails. So do you think goes better tequila or vodka here? Because here I put it both options because I know they both goes well. Uh, if you're looking, if you're using an IPA beer, which is a stronger beer, which we're going to go through beer. Uh, I would put a vodka. Remember, vodka is a neutral uh, drink. 
You have to show me uh, a picture of the cocktail, what is the ingredients of the cocktail, mm -hmm. and sort of talk about that cocktail. You can do it as a PowerPoint if you want, or you can just show the pictures on a share screen. Okay. And fine. also what type of uh, style of bar or theme of bar that you, you're picking up. Okay, perfect. Okay, thanks. Yep. Just took a peek in every room, and it looks like everybody's becoming a mixologist. Got all kinds of cocktails being created. Uh, I can't wait for the presentations and uh, themes that we have in bars. We got pool bars and beach bars and sunset bars and sports bars. And so we got quite a selection of different style of bars. We should have quite a selection of different styles of cocktails to be seen based on the liquor of all the students have been taught about. How are we doing here? Yeah, uh, we have some, let me okay. see. Yeah, yeah, it's the mojito, nice. pineapple. So right then the Prince of L here asking for the ingredients because I can't find it anywhere. Well, you gotta look. I can't, I, you always find Prince of Wales, that's cognac. We don't find with, with whiskey. You can do it with Strange. cognac. I was talking about cognac too. Yeah, now, yeah I, we did want to do, uh, do one with whiskey. So now remember this, you guys picked the sports bar. 